Brother Rod, are you with me? Are we ready to dig into this special time? Shabbat Shalom, brother. I like those glasses on you. <laughs> These are my reading glasses. <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, I appreciated the exhaustive look. Um, I think it's very important. You know, you know, if we're honest, when we look at uh, the scriptures surrounding this time, there's a lot that can that can confuse you. The way the wording comes in, you know, what evening means, what even means, you know, Arab, you know, Bayan, between the evenings, all of these things, you know, can be confusing and throws us off, you know, as we look at them. So it's important to to do an exhaustive study like you just did to to explain. Uh, to our brothers and sisters and to each other um, what they mean, you know, what, and, and because of what they mean, what we are to do. Um, and I thought she did a very, very good job of expressing that, explaining that as we move forward into uh, next week. Um, but I particularly enjoyed the way you um, solidified Passover Yahusha and leaven, unleaven, sin and the removal of sin, how those two are tied together but separate. But what Yahusha did removes the sin, and we do the same thing. The lamb and then removal of sin. You can't have removal of sin <laughs> without the lamb, you know, and, and how they go together. So um, I don't want to over speak because you, you said a lot and it was pretty clear. Um, but I just wanted to, to share that portion, you know, the solidification between and what it means the, the, the Passover lamb and unleavened being without sin because of the lamb. So praise God, brother. Good job. Hallelujah. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, you know, it's so important that we understand this really people coming out of the churches it's never observed these feasts, you know. Um, I see it's recording. You must have pushed the record button on there. <laughs> Somebody did because I didn't push it. So, but anyways, uh, I, I didn't intend to record it, but I'm glad we're recording this so that these discussions can be heard as well. But I see that there's so many people that they really don't understand coming out of, out of the church what these feasts mean, what they represent. And it's important that we understand and, and, and really can digest what they mean to us. So as we enter in and we're prepared, yeah? Because it's the worst thing you want to do is go into something and you don't have no clue what you're supposed to do, you know, what it means to you, you know, what does it represent to the believer. And so when we get into this type of a study like this, it's imperative that we look back to the history because we have examples of what this means to us. And how and and um, how it really affects our lives. So I think that it's important that we, you know, understand that going into this, you know, there's there's a lot of legalistic stuff out there. You know, there's a lot of things that have been put in into place that stumble people. You know, make them trip up. They think that it's this legalistic going taking us backwards and all that type of thing. And you know, it really has nothing to do with any of that. You know, we're supposed to remember. What does that mean? You know, if you if he tells you to remember something, that means you gotta you gotta do something to bring it back to remembrance again, yeah. And it, and that's why he sets this time each year to bring us back because we're distracted throughout the whole year. So when we get back to this time again, it's like, okay, guys, my children, you know, you've been out here playing and got a little dirty. Now it's time for you to examine yourself so you can find what you need to be clean and cleansed of so that when you come into this, your mind is set free and at ease that, hey, I'm, at, I'm right the best that I know, and, I'm, and, and the rest of the work is on him. I surrender to his will. That's the biggest key I see to this example that Yahusha 
he learned obedience because he did what he what he was called to do. He accepted that uh, um, that requirement on him, that calling on his life to do what he was supposed to do. The only one that could do what he what he did. You know, that's the part that bothers me with other people trying to claim responsibility for the blood that was shed and being the Passover lamb. If they truly weren't the one that did it, they ain't qualified to, to in my opinion, to make the claim that they are this one. There's only one, you know, that actually gave and shed his blood. The one that was actually chosen by the father to be that Passover lamb and his son, you know, and it excites me that if people are starting to see it, they're starting to get on track with it. They're starting to understand the importance of this time. Why, you know, Yahuwah doesn't call and tell us to do things just because, you know, there's always a reason, you know, he, he tells us, especially when it's an important thing, when he says, remember something, you better remember it. Cause there's something important that has to do with that thing that he said, remember, and this is one of those. So, Coming into this, I just want to encourage everybody because we're only days out from this, you know, where Tuesday night is where, you know, that's the 14th of the month. So that's when we got to get our minds ready and start thinking about how your forefathers were delivered out of their Mitzrayim, you know, because it's an important story for us to remember and put ourselves in the midst of, you know. I appreciate you, brother Rod. You know, there's there's a lot of wisdom that we gain from this experience over the years that we've been sharing this together. You know, we've come yeah. a long ways, man. We've come a long ways. So yeah, yeah, uh, no, no. I mean, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's amazing how much we keep learning about these appointed times, like. Um, and when you think you have it, you find little idiosyncrasies. Like you said, there's there's details that we have to have adherence to, that we have to pay attention to. You know, you know, we're now going to the Book of Exodus in the afternoon studies, but you know, once we go to the Book of Numbers and you start looking at the the numbers and the calculations, and you're like, well, why do I have to read this? You know, and it all means something. It all it's there for a purpose. Every instruction is there for a purpose the way that he tells us to do it is there for a purpose because there are actions that follow that those instructions protect us you know and that's what people miss about the law it's our instructions for life and if you don't follow the instructions you will miss what they protect you from you know and it's all about protection his instructions you know from cover to cover are all about his way for us and when we live outside of that way we're unprotected salvation is only in the house you know so um you know very important that we follow instructions to a t and continue to be open as we learn sometimes or relearn what the instructions are saying you know um but yeah i'll leave it at that absolutely brother it's it's a beautiful thing to be going through, you know, the, the from understanding to understanding with yeah. you and Jody O, JP, and the rest of our brothers and sisters continually. So, praise God. It is a beautiful thing to continue to learn and grow. I agree with you, brother. You know, and the more we get into this, the more we walk this out, the more I appreciate this time, you know. Because when I first started, I really didn't understand or comprehend, you know, these times and why are they important for us to still remember and to observe, you know, I just, it didn't make a lot of sense to me as I was reading because it's like, okay, we don't kill animals no more. We don't got to do none of that. So why are we doing this, you know? And the more I dig into it and look at these, what they mean each, each feast day, you know, each day that we're called to observe, Man, there's a lot of revelation here, and there's purpose that is designed for his people. Because if you look at his people, what's the message that you heard today? You know, to examine yourself and to get yourself ready and prepared. That's a message that he's telling us, and he tells us this a couple times a year. 
He tells us in the beginning at Pesach, and he tells us again at, just before the Day of Atonement, during that, that week, you know, of trumpets and that, where we got to examine ourselves. He's trying to keep us ready and, 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 and keep our, our, our lamps full of oil so that we're ready for when that return comes. Because, you know, all of us see, you know, the signs are all around us, you know. I, I, my personal belief, it can happen anytime. You know, there ain't nothing really that I think that could hold them back at this point, you know, um, other than timing, I guess, whatever the Father's timing is. So it behooves us as his believers to listen to what these, uh, these feasts are telling us and the example they're showing us because there's a lot to learn within, that's contained within them you know, that most people have no clue what they represent, what they mean, and how they tie back to Mashiach. You know, this is a perfect portrait of him and what he's called to do with his prophetic fulfillments, you know. It's all in this. It's like all intertwined, you know, that scarlet thread, as I mentioned, you know, that plan of salvation, it's all here. You know, we get to be part of that. That's a beautiful thing. So without continuing to, to talk, I'm going to go ahead and let Brother Mecca Share with us what he's got for us. Shabbat shalom, brother. I'll come. Oh, there he is. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hold on one sec. Okay. Oh. oh. Hold on. Let me try to get rid of this echo. Okay. All right. Uh, what I wanted to bring out. Oh, great, great message. Um, first of all, you know, definitely good to uh, get ourselves prepared, understanding the um, weight of what we're partaking in. Um, I think you did an excellent job in conveying um, the importance of us preparing ourselves and getting us ready, you know, because as you know, the Yashara was very, um, you know, they were partaking in the sins of Mitzrayim and they needed to speedily get that out of their system, you know. And so, you know, looking at, you know, that first is, is the most important thing that we need to cleanse ourselves from that. And then uh, looking at Yahusha and the sacrifice, you know, and, and comparing, you know, and comparing the lamb, you know, um, that was you know, and the blood of the lamb. When we read in, in John chapter 10, uh, it says in verse seven, uh, it says, then said Yahushua unto them again, truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that, it, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. And then in verse nine, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And so when you think about Yahushua being the door, the blood that was shed of him during the, um, during his, you know, persecution, you know, if he is the door, all that blood that was shed by him was equivalent to the blood that was put on the post. You know, his head was bleeding, his blood dripping down his arms, his whole body, you know, he was that blood, you know, his blood is that equivalent to the blood that covers, you know, but more significant, of course, to the blood that covers the door. And those that are in him are secured by that blood that has been shed over his body. You know, those that obey in faith, you know, our father and trust in, in, in Yahushua's sacrifice. Those are the ones who are safe from, from death, you know, uh, whether it be the first or the second death. Um, you know, those are the ones who are secure. So I just wanted, the first thing I wanted to do was point that out, you know, just the significance of his blood being shed and him being the door. Um, you know, if you don't come in through Yahushua, then you're not, you know, you're not getting in, you know, or you're, you're trying to break into a kingdom where it's not, it's not fit for you, you know? And so, um, I wanted to point that out. And then the second, uh, Second thing I wanted to point out, um, let me just get the verse real quick from, it's in 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 1, and it says, 
uh, my little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahusha, Messiah, the righteous. And he is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And, here what, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And so just, you know, going a little bit deeper on the second verse, he is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. In um, Exodus chapter 12, uh, in verse, uh, let me see. In verse three, it says, speak unto the assembly of Yashara, saying, in the 10th day of this month, you shall take of them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto him, unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. So looking at this, you know, Yahusha is, is too big of a lamb, it's, you know, for just Yahshua Raw. He's, he's come to redeem the entire world, you know, so he's too precious. He's too, his mission was too great just for Yahshua Raw, you know, and so looking at this in, in terms of the gospel message and our duty to share it, you know, it's our duty to call to say, hey, look, y'all, I got a lamb that's way too big just for me to eat. Like, this is eternal life we're talking about. We have an obligation and a duty to try to reach out to others and share this lamb because it's just, you know, it's too big just for the house of Yashara. You know, he came to redeem the whole world. And so Yashara has a duty, you know, to say, hey, look, you know, or else we just burn in a bunch of leftovers, you know, but it's it's our duty that are awoke and know the truth that we we share this you know lamb we make sure that hey look this house is too small we need to share it with others you know and, and to try to make sure that it gets used up you know all the way and that none goes to waste you know that Yahushua's sacrifice is 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 fully um benefited from you know for all those who who are willing to hear and willing to partake so you know, I appreciate this message this morning, definitely. Um, and I just praise Yah because this is this actually uh, what I just spoke on was something that he just um, gave to me yesterday. You know, as I was just meditating, I wasn't reading the word or anything like that. I wasn't studying Pesach, but he just, I don't know, it's like he just uploaded it into me. So I just wanted to share that. And uh, once again, brother, I appreciate the, the time and the dedication. It's always good to get that upload from him. <laughs> no. <laughs> or download whichever way you're looking at i guess but uh as long as you're getting something from them i guess uh but yeah that, you know <laughs> those, those scriptures that you pulled out there you know they're, they're right on point you know and there's examples there that, that i see uh, of what this is telling us and what it's representing so you know we're all seeing that picture clear the one thing i'm glad you clear you cleared up is yeah he did come and he did die for the whole world but what that really means is those that really uh, believe in him and that will be obedient to him. You know, that's what he came for. And you clarified that at the end. You know, some people think he just came and everybody's going to be saved, you know, and uh, it's that's not a, an accurate statement. It, you know, the clarification is he did come and he shed his blood for all that would, the whole world that would believe upon him and that would you know, repent and turn back unto Yahuwah the Father and his ways. So, you know, good point. Brother Rod, I see you sitting up, so I know you got some. No, no, I, I definitely uh, just speaking to what Emeka said as far as, you know, those who repent. And I think the full understanding comes through the word propitiation, which you use out of, out of John, um, which which literally means it doesn't just mean the sacrifice it's the sacrifice upon which the wrath was poured on and was satisfied so so yahusha's sacrifice satisf satisfies the 
the judicial part, Romans, right, of what was required for sin to be forgiven. Like sin just doesn't get forgiven. There has to be a penalty paid. It's a judicial circumstance. Yah's law requires it. If he just forgave sin without the requirement, he would be outside of his own law. So the propitiatory sacrifice was Yahusha, in which all of the wrath of all of the sin from the beginning to the end of mankind was poured upon so that it satisfied the judicial portion of uh, Yahuwah's law. So just wanted to make sure that we clearly understood it's not just a sacrifice. The wrath was poured on him instead of us who deserved it. That's why he, that, that same meaning or the same understanding of that word, propitation, is actually atonement. You know, he's come and he's atoned for those sins, which means the whole weight of the Torah or the law, if you will, that, that's required for that sin, which requires death, you know. So all that was put upon him. So he atoned. He took it. You know, he received so that that would pay the, the the cost of that of the of the Torah's requirement for that sin on your behalf, but that only happens when you believe and that you repent and turn back away, and then you receive Him and His ruach. Therefore, you have the the uh, the, uh, the remission and the forgiveness of those sins. But until that happens, you know you, you're really not. Uh, you know you got to understand there are certain things that are required of us to be able to receive that atonement. You know that he has paid the price for. It just doesn't going to go to everybody. Just going to abuse it, you know. And, and it's got to be for real. He said, "Is you got to give it with all your heart, mind, soul, your body, everything. Your whole being needs to be involved in that decision." So, and then then you receive because you fully understand and comprehend what he's done for us, what he's done for you. You know, and therefore you can completely believe in what he's done for you. And therefore, now you fall into that uh, atonement, you know, or under that atonement, yeah? Yeah, now you're going to open up another can of worms there. So, <laughs> so when you say, you know, those who have truly, you know, you know, the full understanding of that is simply, you know, those who have given away, put to death, buried, the habitual lifestyle that they formerly lived and now have a habitual lifestyle that emulates him are those that are truly repentant. That's why you will know us by our fruit. You know, our fruits show who we are. You know, it doesn't matter what you say, what your life does speaks it. You know what I mean? We could tell our kids all day, well, what do they see? You know, what did our neighbors see? What do the people in the fellowship see? You know. It has to match. The habitual lifestyle of a believer emulates that of the follower of Yahushua. So. Right on point, brother. I'm glad you jumped up and said something, as always. Brother Williams, I see you up, and then I'm coming to you, Sister Poppy. Shabbat shalom, brother. Are you with me? Yeah, Shabbat shalom, everyone. That was a powerful, powerful message um, as usual, but I take this one really special because as we are entering into the time of Passover and um, we all are Barak to come up to this point to be able to go into Passover because a lot of people have been made it to this point and the way he had used you to explain how to observe and keep the Passover from uh, we've been coming up and celebrating throughout the year, giving us time to really examine ourselves from where we came from and to where he has us at now. Uh, we used to celebrate all these pagan holidays and people look forward to celebrating them. But I am Barack to be able to come out of that and to look forward to and be blessed to be in the land of the living to be able to approach Passover and being able to be taught what it really means. You know, we didn't know it's coming up, what it really mean and what we have to do is serving ourselves and setting ourselves apart and being a part of his covenant is a baraka for me. And um, like it's going on my second year and I thank him for allowing me to this point to be able to come into 
is Passover and the feast days separating from the holidays of paganism. And uh, I'm really blessed behind it. He really used you in a powerful way. It really opened in my understanding. And I look forward to, if it's the will of the Most High Yah to reach that point, to be able to go through Passover because we're not promised today or tomorrow. But if he get me to this point in my Muna, I believe that he's gonna allow me to participate in this Passover and the feast day. So praise Yah and you all in my prayers and thank the Most High that we made it to this moment to learn and to know, to get ready to set ourselves apart to observe this uh, Passover, a Passover and feast day. Praise y'all. Hallelujah, brother. You know, I'm grateful that you're here and, uh, and uh, growing as you are, you know. I've been through a few of these since uh, I've been called to, into this truth. And I can truly say the more you put into it, the more you really get into this and really uh, pay attention to what you're doing during this time. Make it make it a focus uh, for you to really put forth the effort to really truly look at yourself. You know, no matter how hard it is, sometimes some some of us think that we're good. Some of us know that we got some shortcomings still. You know, but this is really the time that we need to bear ourselves before Him. You know, we need to get rid of that that leaven, which is that representing that sin in our lives. So. You know, let's continue to, as we're walking in this and meditating on this, allow it to really transform our thinking. So when we walk in in this, we get the full effects of what we're here for. Hallelujah. Sister Poppy, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Brother Don. Shabbat Shalom. Good message. Thank you very much. Um, I was, made me, or took me to Luke uh, 23, 35 where it said, and the people were standing, looking on, and the rulers also were sneering with them, saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah, the chosen of Elohim. And it just made me start thinking how totally corrupted and lack of understanding the religious leaders um, who were mocking him and who partook in all that had become because Yahushua came to save others. That was, they should have known that. He didn't come to save himself. But, but he's, he came to lay down his life for us. And what a perfect, amazing, beautiful gift that was. And to mock him for that. But that's where we're at in today's churches, too, is they're teaching their lack of understanding. They're teaching a JC that was born on Xmas. And nobody's following. No, I can't say nobody, most are not even looking into Pesach or his feast. And I, I just think it's so sad. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Well, you know what? I think it's sad too, because it is such a beautiful time and it's not a burden at all. You know, some people think, well, it's a burden. I need to go through my cupboards and I got to get out all the leaven, all the yeast, all that bread. I mean, like, what am I going to do with it all? You know, it's like, but. You know, if you're preparing yourselves, you get prepared, you understand that it's a physical representation of what you're doing spiritually, so that you understand it's it's something you're acting out in a physical, just like immersion, you know, you're you're acting it out in a physical way, but it's a spiritual thing, you know. And and, and as a human being, it, it behooves us to actually do an action towards what we're trying to uh, emulate, if you will. You know, if we just talk all the words and we don't do nothing, we're, are we really, are we benefiting from the experience that we're supposed to be gaining something from, you know? So when we go into this, it, it's really smart for us to see the importance of this time. You know, if we were together where we could actually get together and do these type of uh, things where the whole assembly is together, and hopefully it happens one day, but... You know, there was a time during this time also that Yahushua washed the feet of the disciples. And I've had that done. I've experienced that. And it's a very moving, a humbling experience. So those of you that have multiple people, you know, husbands and wives or whatever, uh, children, that you can have somebody go through this and walk out this time frame and, and see what it's like to, to be a servant. To, to do something that Yahushua did, 
during this time as an example to us, it's going to be something that will move us strongly too. So good points there, sister. Sister Martha, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I actually thought it was a great teaching. It reminds, well, it reminded me of everything that we read in the Bible, but it's just so direct. Um, so it's just like a reminder of what's the purpose of doing, you know, the feast and keeping the feast. Um, but I actually had a uh, com uh, not a comment, a question. Um, the teaching is not uploaded in the in the system. So I just wanted to know when are you going to upload it? Because usually what I do is I just, you know, after service, I just go back little by little. So I notice it's not there. So it's just a question. Well, I don't know who saved me, but I, they, they, they pushed the button. So I don't have the ability to do it like I normally do. So whoever did that, wherever it's recorded, Sister June, I'm suspecting you probably, but uh, um, whoever did it, it's going hopefully to the cloud or to wherever it's going so that we can upload it. So usually I handle that, but this week I didn't because it's kind of a refresher of what we did last year, but the oh. questions and answers are a little different. But if you wanted to actually hear the actual study, you can either read it in its PDF format or uh, I have last year's study, which is on our assembly of Yahoo uh, page as well. So, yeah, that, that is where I went. I went to the page of Yahoo um, to the PDF and it's not there. So I guess I'll go to the one from last year. Um, it is there. It's just uh, I didn't upload the new PDF for that study. I just used the same one. Okay. So uh, you just got to find that particular, it's like two, 246 or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the number was, but it's in that area. If you, okay. do, if you go to the page and you hit Control F and then you type in the box in there, the uh, Pesach, it'll actually give you the two listings and you can scroll through them to find the, the latest one. Thank you. Uh, Sister Martha, I, I got your question and I actually sent you a link to this study that uh, Brother Rick did last year and I'll send you a link to the PDF too. That way you don't have to worry about finding it, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I think that that's a good thing for us to record these things, even if we don't post them. So I learned a valuable lesson here today. Okay, Brother Nathaniel. Shabbat Shalom, Brother. I'm coming to you, Brother JP. You didn't have your hand up, but I see you turned on your, your, your camera. So you know I'm coming. <laughs> After Brother Nathaniel. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Brother. I just want to touch on that uh, part that you brought out in Exodus 13, 3. And Moshe said to the people, remember this day in which you went out of Mitzrayim. Um, 13, 9, you said it shall be as a sign to you on your hand, as a reminder between your eyes. And then in 10, it says guard this law as it's appointed time from year to year. And then 16 says uh, it shall be as a sign on your hand, as front lip between your eyes. The same word in Exodus 13, 3 that, you, that, that is used for remember. Um, it's the same uh, root word uh, the, the two words are connected for remember the Sabbath. Um, uh, the, the root word on that is uh, Zakar. Um, and uh, um, that word Zakar, it can be used as the word remember. Um, and, and it can also be used as the word to mark. So when it says to remember this day or to remember the Sabbath, it's to mark the Sabbath. And when, when you see it's talk about, and, and I've never really looked at, at it, so I want to thank you. I've never seen that before. Um, uh, Exodus 13, 3, where it says, um, you remember this day talking about Pesach. And so it's telling you to mark, mark the Pesach. And then verse 9 says, it shall be as a sign to you on your hand as a, as a reminder between your eyes. So you mark the Pesach on your, on your hand and you mark it on your eyes. And we know we're not physically... You know, I mean, how do you mark a Pesach on your hand and on your eyes? You know, it's kind of a little crazy if you're taking it literal. So we know um, that that it's uh, that it's you know in your mind um, and and it goes through in your actions. You know, um, by by the actions of your hand. Um, and so it, it's kind of interesting, you know, um, how Yahuwah has has um, he has us marked. He has us marked on our forehead. He has us marked on our hand. You know, we are to remember these things, um, you know, and, um, and we know that the, you know, 
we know that it correlates with that mark of the beast, you know, uh, which is the opposite, you know, aspect of that. And so um, I've always connected the Sabbath uh, with the marking of your eyes and the Shema. You know, I think that's a Deuteronomy 6. I forget where exactly. I think it's like seven through nine, is somewhere in that in that range, six through nine or something, uh, where where it says, "Do you have it?" Um, you know, between your eyes um, and uh, and on your hand also. But I've never connected it with uh, Pesach. Um, uh, so there's just another thing in there. So um, it's definitely very important um, to have because these things are 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 not just remembrances of the things that happened you know, uh, 3,500 years ago, um, uh, or, and, and all the times in between that, you know, you know namely like around 2000 years ago. Um, but these are things that are also going to be happening here. Um, you know, yeah, willing here in the, in the near future at some time. Um, and they are, they're the, these days of remembrance. Um, and that we also, it's the, it's the lessons, uh, and, and, uh, the moral of the story. And, and that's, you know, something that, you know, a lot of times when, like like uh like some secular book gets written and then it goes into a movie and you someone who reads the book and then you see the movie and then when you watch the movie they always take all the morality out of it they take the the lessons out of it they take the the learning lessons they water it down you get special effects it looks all nice to the eyes but it has no real meaning to it anymore and so like that's kind of what we have with a, a lot of these you know you know you know false teachings and in, in and half truths in in these man made institutions, you know, is they have forms of that, like a Hollywood movie. You know what I mean? And it, and and it may look all nice, you know, but when when you actually analyze it, there's no depth, there's no morality, there's no meaning. So that's why we have to have this meaning marked on our eyes, not just the works. So thank you for that, uh, Exodus thirteen three. I'm I'm gonna add that into the understanding. Shalom. Hallelujah. Well, right back at that, there's a going back to that that same wording that we see there that you, that you just pointed out and how it's connected to that. Now, if we look at Revelation 13, 16, and it says, and it's talking about the mark of the beast here, interestingly enough, where it says, all forced, all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands and on their foreheads. And then we also see that same wording in 14, verse 9, where it says, a third of the Moloch followed them and, and said with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast in the image and receives its mark on their forehead and on their hand. So it's interesting that we see that particular wording used when it's saying to remember Pesach and when it's, when it's trying to remember the Sabbath, those things we see are, are using this terminology is marking you, you know, it's part of the sign that we belong to him, that he's our Elohim and, you know, we are his people. So it's really interesting when we see that Pesach is actually included with those same words as the opposite in Revelation. The, I'm interested, is there a correlation there? In some way, I have to think that there is. Uh, and that's not what this study is about, but just that, that you brought that correlation out. It, it's it's interesting how you see those same wordings used for the mark of the beast here versus what he uses it for as a mark that we belong to him. So, you know, I, on, on that point, you know, just, I know that's not necessarily what the study is about, but I think that it's kind of related um, uh, in, a, in an interesting way of, uh, um, you know, that, that, that mark of that beast, there's those four, those four aspects didn't worship the beast, the image of the beast mark on the forehead mark on the hand. Um, and we know, we know from Mark 1230, uh, Messiah repeats the Shema, but he gives you four pieces instead of three that you get in, in Deuteronomy 6, 5, you get you know, to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. And so, so those who remember the first commandment, not to have any false Elohim didn't, didn't worship the beast. So they love him with all their heart. You know, when you connect it, those who didn't worship the image of the beast, remember the second commandment, not to have any graven images and worship it. So they love him with all their soul. Those who didn't have the mark of the beast on their, on their forehead, they, they have the father's character. You know, we have the father's seal, you know, the congregation of Philadelphia sealed 144,000 sealed those crying with the abomination. Uh, done within the land of Israel, uh, you know, uh, Ezekiel 9, 4, sealed on their forehead. So those who remember the third commandment, who did not take his 
character in vain, love them with all their heart, right? Heart, soul, mind, I'm sorry, mind, love them with all their mind. So heart, soul, mind is the third one. The third commandment is to not take his character in vain and the mark of the beast not having it on the forehead is that. So the Sabbath regulation, those who did not have the mark of the beast on their on their hand, they mark the Sabbath. Remember, Zakar Shabbat, they have the Sabbath on their hand. So they love them with all their strength, right? Heart, soul, mind, strength, six days you labor, one you rest. So I kind of see a correlation, a similarity between a lot of that, you know, um, uh, but in the Sabbath or the, the feast days, I never connected it with the feast days. And now, thank you, you know, Exodus 13, three, that's, that connects that also is another mark that we have of the father's character that, uh, in our, in our mind, in our, in our forehead through the learning lessons. Praise Yahuwah. You know, more clarity comes. That's what we pray for. Open our eyes and our ears and we can see it. And he does. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Appreciate you, Brother Nathaniel. Brother JP, you turned off your camera, so you're going to have to pop it back on so I can see you, brother. There you are. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, Miss Parker. Oh, I forgot. Shabbat shalom, my brother Deacon. Ah, come on, come on. Hey, <laughs> hey. Just so y'all know, you know he, uh, you know he is our first in this assembly. As, uh, what, is the, what is the other? What is the other uh, uh, definitions of a uh, of the uh, uh, brother? A brother, you know. <laughs> Deacon J. Deacon J. Uh, yeah. Yeah, too much. What's up, Deacon? <laughs> yeah, no, my brother. Well. I was, I was, uh, you know, I was kind of in that area of thinking, um, after, after the blood that is on us, like as, as covering us of Messiah, I was, I was thinking about the seal of Elohim, you know, that seal that's getting, that gets placed on us. And, um, out of second Timothy chapter two, verse 19, it says, nevertheless, the foundation of Elohim standeth sure having this seal, the master knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Messiah depart from iniquity. And I was thinking about, you know, because I agree with a lot that's been said of, as far as, um, you know, everybody. There's just this seal that I was like, wow, like, you know, it, it just takes a part when you, when you, not when you just do Passover, but, but more so of, you know, being covered by Messiah, you know, and. And there's and there's only two more verses that I wanted to pull out. Another one was in uh, Revelation 7, 2. And it talks about, it says here, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim. So the angel had the seal of the living Elohim right there. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then to connect it with um, Revelation 9, it says in verse four, and I was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. So kind of connecting with what you and the brother were speaking about right now is, is, you know, having that seal of Elohim, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I was correlating it in my mind with, with Passover, with Messiah, with his covering and being in covenant and then just how it comes together in a combination of things. And um, so, so then I, I took it back to Exodus and then, and in Exodus it says in twelve fourteen, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. And so that's, it was pretty amazing. Like when you see that to memorialize something, you know, like that, like what we're talking about today, uh, you know, and then it just it just came together in my in my mind as far as to memorialize the Passover to that represents Messiah, which then represents the seal, my seal, the covering of me, and which is what's going to protect me. You know, even in today, right right now, what we're going through today, I you know I stand sure in that. So so yeah, I, I really I the you know, one thing I would like to ask is. Uh, I want to get a timeline of, of uh, your thoughts when you, not today, of course, but, you know, because I'm trying to understand the timeline, you know, of, of that Passover week. So that's something I would, I would talk to you about. So, but Shabbat Shalom. I love this, man. Thank you for the message. It was beautiful. Um, it's definitely much needed, you know, to know the covering and that the blood of Messiah, that it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Just been 
diving into this for the last like I feel like almost month, you know, and it's just a beautiful thing to to continue to be edified by my brothers and sisters. So thank you. Shabbat shalom. Spoken like a like a deacon, but I would have to say uh, <laughs> that was a good point, brother. You know, not to take away from what you just said, um, but it's you know when we look at this and we start seeing even when he says that this will be a memorial, well, that word there still can be a sign or a mark. So, you know, it, it, those things, I'm starting to see how they're all linking, you know, and it, how much you're missing when you don't observe these feasts. This is just the first one, and we can see how entailed and how detailed it is, how it's all surrounding our, our Savior, our Mashiach, and the, what he's done to establish a covenant so that we can even, even be here today. So it's almost hard to have a, a, a more important time than this. And when we really go through this time and we really, we really absorb ourselves in it, we really jump into this full, with full effort, full, full force, if you will, and decide, you know what, this is the experience I'm going to have this time. You know, some of us have had multiple experiences, but it doesn't matter. It's just, this, is a, this is its own unique one. Because each one is different. Each one's unique. It's, it's weird how it is that way, but it is. It's unique depending on, you know, the, the people that are involved and how involved they get. But, you know, this is a powerful time. Because if you think about this, this is a set-apart time that Yahuwah has created for us. You know, this isn't no normal other normal day. This is a specific time that he has said to remember and to observe and be obedient to it. And what's contained within it, if you will actually dig into this and actually participate and do the, the servantile, the, the worship part, the, the obedience side of it and say, you know what, I'm, I'm really going to look at myself this time. Because I see Passover as one of the biggest things is for us to be protected. You know, he, he promises our, his protection upon us because of the blood covering, that seal that, that we are under because we say, I believe Yahushua is the one. I think he's the Messiah. He's the one that actually came in his father's name. He's the one that actually paid the price. He shed his blood. You know, when you start putting it into that and you narrow it down now, just like our prayer time, when we're, when we're using a name here, we're directing it where it needs to go. I see the same thing with this. Pesach, lamb, there's one. There's nobody else that's done this but him. That's his place of honor, you know, and he's done it for you and I to establish this covenant that we, that we are currently under. And we talked about the covenants last week, and, you know, maybe we need to go into that covenant a little deeper so people really grab an understanding that the importance of what Yahuwah says that we, he's established with us and what they represent and mean to us as believers. Because this time right now that we're in, you know, it's a it's a Baruch time. Yahuwah said it, I Baruch this time myself. You know, I've established these times. He's the one that's setting the appointments. You know, it's you and I. We got to confirm the appointment just like I do with Sister June. You know, and that when that thing comes in, you, you confirm or you don't. You deny it. You know, what are you going to do here? You know, this is an appointment that he's got with his children. And are you going to show up or are you not? And if you're not, you're missing out on a baraka, you know. So I encourage each one of you, wherever you are in the world, to observe this time and give it your all towards him and really dig into what he's done, appreciate his, his sacrifice, his efforts, what it was required of him, so that you and I can be here today. So I think that's the biggest thing that we can take out of this time going forward. Um, and I just encourage each one of you to just do that because you're going to come out of this time and this is another seven-day period, just like we see in a, during that time between uh, uh, trumpets and atonement. You know, we got to examine ourselves during this time. And if we do that each and every day and we come before him and we bury uh, everything, we just bear it all before him and let him clean us, well, you can't come out of this but change. That's all I can say. So. Anybody else have any, any more input that they'd like to share with us? Uh, we do have only a couple minutes, but uh, we got enough time for somebody if they have anything else. 
Like everybody satisfied? No hands going up. Um, Brother Gary, before I, I think, know if you could raise your hand, I'm going to come to you first. Anything you'd like to share, brother? Well, I, I, I will say that this uh, coming to talk is going to be the. My well, I don't think he was talking to us. Anyhow, I appreciate everybody's input today. It's been a great time of study, and I look forward to continuing in our afternoon study today. So may you continue to brack you and keep you in all of your ways. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>